Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Farron from Treasury Metals. How are you today? I'm great. Nice seeing you again, Tracy. Got to tell you, I love the name, Treasury Metals. And according to one of our top writers, the treasure is really your formula. I think he wrote here that uh, the best place to put a gold mine is next to another gold mine. And uh, he said, co-development is your key. Now, I don't know if he's correct or not, but I do like the name Goliath Gold Project. So why don't we start there? Sure. Okay. Well, it's funny you say that because I was presenting at the Precious Metal Summit today and we were talking about being next to a gold mine. We're next to a very prolific camp, Red Lake, and the Dryden camp is just south of that. So, you know, we believe this is going to turn into the next Red Lake. And in addition, we recently made the, the Gold Lund acquisition. So we bought our neighbor and now we have more than 3 million ounces of gold on the Trans-Canada Highway with one of the largest land packages in Canada. So we do believe that there is going to be more gold next to our district and as well of these gold projects. One of the things that I've often commented on to investors out there that are, for instance, new to the gold market is the value of a great treasure hunter, a great geologist. And of course, Greg, you've been in the industry a long time. I recommend that people take a look at your bio and background to see your formula for success. Can you talk to us a little bit about your treasure hunters over at Treasury Metals? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, we have a great team uh, at Treasury, lots of geologists. We've uh, spent the entire spring and summer doing uh, soil sample, gas carbon work, looking for additional resources outside our, our 3 million ounce deposit. So it's quite interesting, and, and our Treasury is actually in great shape as well. So we recently com completed the largest financing in the history of the company. We raised $11.5 million, and we've got some of the largest, most successful uh, institutional investors in that financing. Okay. So let's talk about why. I tell people all the time, I said, you know, uh, even though gold prices have been as high as they have, a lot of the juniors, too, you know, small to mid caps, haven't enjoyed the joy ride yet of the gold price. And um, so I'd love for you to comment on that. We've had a number of experts recently, like David Morgan, saying it's not too late that we'll con continue to see this translation into the fall. Do you have any thoughts on that, Greg? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's The gold price has done very well, around $2,000, and there's a lot of support overnight in Asia. And each morning in the U.S. is now the gold price is opening up. Uh, lots of liquidity, and the producers have been trading very well, but they're still way off their highs of, of the previous rally in 2011, 2012. And the juniors like Treasury were trading – you know, a, with a big resource, 3 million ounces, almost a 200 million market cap, and we're still trading at 50, 60 Canadian dollars an ounce. So there's still a lot of room for these projects to go. And I think our projects like us are going to be the next wave to move and that we're in a good jurisdiction on the Trans-Canada Highway or development story. And I think what's going to happen, one or two more acquisitions that are going to be announced is, you know, has been a lot of M&A, and that's really going to get the sector moving, especially for the developers. You've seen some some interesting exploration stories doing very well, but other than that, the market is still very, very cheap. So it's very early in the in the cycle. And of course, I know you're used to working and communicating with a lot of people with extensive backgrounds in the resource sector, but there's a lot of new investors out there that are entertaining getting into the gold sector. Can you kind of give them a reason, a competitive advantage on why Treasury Metals is the company they need to be looking at. Sure. Well, I mean, I think from an investment standpoint, they should just be looking to diversify out of the bond market, out of cash, as you know, out of the dollar, maybe even out of real estate. So that's why you're very early starting to see retail, family offices, outside that small group that were already in the gold sector, get in, into the gold space. So, you know, it is very early. In, in Canada, you know, you're, you're really noticing with things like with COVID, people want to be in safe jurisdictions. It's difficult to travel now. Ontario is a great jurisdiction. So is Canada for gold mining. It's one of the largest gold producing regions in the world. And you know, we're right on the Trans-Canada Highway, you know, so that keeps our costs down. We have all the infrastructure. You have skilled labor, You've got a very high grade uh, open pit and an attractive underground grade. So, you know, these are the reasons I would suggest uh, looking at Treasury Metals. 
And of course, those of you out there that have been following Treasury Metals, would you mind giving us an update? You recently acquired the Goldland Projects. Okay, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? I'm, I'm uh, fairly new to Treasury Metals myself. I'd like to learn more. Yeah, yeah. So it was a very interesting acquisition. If you can believe it, the project boundaries are one kilometer apart, and the acquisition took more than twenty years <laughs> to actually agree to get the deal done. That's just how how business is. It's not always easy. So it was a sixty-five million dollar acquisition. We paid in shares, a royalty, and and some future cash payments. But that doubled our resource. So we're now one of the largest undeveloped gold projects in Canada with more than a three million ounce uh, deposit. It's an open pit as well. Um, so that's attractive grades near surface. And we had a federal EA for our mill and tailing facility, and we had the ability to, to toll mill a second project. So it was really a perfect uh, marriage, bringing these two deposits together under one company. And we liked it being done in treasury metal structure because it's a pure play on this new district and this larger resource. So we're thrilled that we're able to get it done within treasury and not had, uh, having to sell our project to the other group. One of your uh, interested parties sent me an email today asking me to ask you to comment on your ownership in Platinex and provide an update on Shining Tree on your Shining Tree district. Love the name. Yeah, yeah. So part of the transaction, as mentioned, we bought Gold Lund to focus on Northwestern Ontario. So we're now one of the largest, or we probably are the largest undeveloped project in Northwestern Ontario. We had a second project, a gold project in around the Timmins area, which is 10 hour drive away from Northwestern Ontario. So it made sense to sell that project to another company called Platinex. So we were now the largest equity holder. We own about 15%, about 20 million shares of Platinex. And that's quite an interesting district. It's in Timmins. It's a, it's a less well-known camp within Timmins, and they've got the largest uh, gold project in Timmins um, in, in the Shining Tree camp. Cote Lake just announced yesterday that they're building their mine. They finally got the approval to go ahead. And uh, so it's a great play on, on, a, on another district, and it gives Treasury Metal shareholders you know, a second upside and another exciting gold camp. And of course, I think you told me just before we started this interview that you had a marathon of meetings this week, 18 meetings in one day. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's the one advantage of, uh, I guess, COVID is doing all these uh, meetings online. You're able to get a lot of meetings done uh, in one day as opposed to doing face-to-face uh, -face meetings at these mm -hmm. conferences. So that's a, it's a three-day conference. Typically, it's held in Denver, but now it's held virtually. And uh, the other thing about the virtual meetings is you're getting investors from around the globe are able to participate. So because of that, we have uh, 45 meetings over the three-day period. Well, we know you have a lot of enthusiastic shareholders. I know Mario Drolet has done tech notes for us at least two on Treasury Metals. Can you tell us what shareholders should look forward to in, say, the next quarter or two? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the gold price and just trying to correct the discount of where we're trading, it's really a value stock right now. And the reason I say that is because the acquisition only closed a month ago. So the market hasn't really heard the new story, the combined story. And the other thing they're, they're going to want to see is the combined economics that are coming out on the project, which will take another two to three months. So I think the stock should catch up as the as we start telling the story like we're doing this week. In a strong gold market, and then as these economics come out, I think the uh, the market will will start pricing this in with our peers, which should be you know a double from from where we are today in the short term. Well, Greg, thank you so much for joining us. We're actually, as a result of this interview, I'm going to talk Mario Drolet into doing your next update for Investor Intel. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, pleasure. Nice seeing you again, Tracy. Thank you.